we're going to look at the correction of errors and we're going to do a quick revision of it first. First of all, uh, the correction of errors is all about double entry. So go back to what you've done in your junior cycle, go back to the day books, the cash book, the ledgers. So it's all about every debit must have corresponding credit. Okay, Earl. Just read capping what Earl is. You have your expenses, assets, revenue, and liabilities. So no matter what you're going to talk about, you have to identify which of the four it is. So you must say if it's um, an expense, an asset, revenue, or a liability. Now, each one of these belong on a different side. So expenses and assets belong on the debit side. Revenue and liabilities belong on the credit side. Another thing that you want to be, take note of, these two affect your profit and loss. And these two here affect your balance sheet. And that's going to be relevant in part C and part D of the question. Now, four different items here. So if I was talking about four of these, the first thing that you need to identify is which one it is. So wages is something that you do all the time. Now, again, just in case you can't figure out which one, the, which one it is, expenses and revenues are things that happen daily or monthly, the things that you're always doing. So wages is something that you have to pay constantly. It's an expense because you have to pay it. So Earl says it belongs on the debit side. So it will, you will add it if it's on the debit. If it happens to be on the credit and you want to reduce your wages, it will go on the credit. Okay, so just be careful. You have to know to work both sides in accountancy. Rent received, that's something good. If you're receiving rent, you're probably receiving it monthly or weekly. So it has to be something that's happening constantly. So it's a profit and loss. It's a good thing, so it's revenue. And revenue should be on the credit. So it'll be on this side if I want to increase it. Although in accountancy, again, it could appear on the debit, but you should know it's you're reducing it if it's revenue. The next thing is buildings. Buildings is something definitely that you own and you have it for a long time. So it can't go into profit and loss because it's not something you do daily or monthly. You don't buy buildings daily or monthly. Buildings is something that you own for a long time. So it's an asset. It's something that you own. So assets should be on the debit side. If you were selling a building, you'd be reducing it and therefore it'd be on the credit side. Just watch that again. A loan, you don't take out a loan every day. A loan might be, most households take out a huge loan called a mortgage. Most businesses, if they're buying a building, take out a loan called a debenture. So it's something that you probably wouldn't do that often. So it's definitely not daily or monthly. So it's nothing to do with profit and loss. It is something that you owe. So therefore, it goes to the balance sheet. It's a liability. So it would be on the credit side if you were increasing it. But if you were paying back your loan, it will be on the debit side. So the first key thing, you're going to see this in the next video, when I'm going to go through some of these. The first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to figure out which accounts I need to open. The second thing I'm going to figure out is which part of Earl it is. And the third thing I'm going to always figure out is which side of which account it should be on. Okay, the, the few things that come up um, a lot, I'm just going to go through them, make sure you understand these, and again, you're going to see them in the next video. If they mention debtors, it goes hand in hand with discount about. If they mention creditors, it goes hand in hand with discount received. What I'd always say to my students, just remember the C there, with the C there. Drawings is when the owner takes something from the business. So you have a drawings account and whatever they took from the business. Examples of what an owner might take, they might take cash, they might take goods, which would be purchases, they might take a car. Whatever they take is the second account there. Just remember this one. This can come up also in question one. If it says the owner took stock, make sure it's purchases. Just come back over this. Your definition of purchases are items that you buy that you're going to sell again. So if you imagine you a grocery shop and the owner goes in and takes milk out of it and takes bread out of it, they've taken stock. But what they've actually done is they've reduced your purchases because you can't sell that anymore. So when the owner takes stock, remember it's your purchases that's affected. Really put that in bold when you take it down. If a bad debt is written off, that means that, and this goes back to your business as well, you've decided to sell on credit for whatever reason. You want to increase your sales or it might be because your competitors are selling on credit. So uh, when you sell on credit, you have this risk that people may not pay you back. 
that people don't pay you back. They have a debt to you and it's turned bad. So it's a bad debt. So you will never get that money. So that means you have um, got an expense. And we call this expense your bad debt has went up. It means that your debtors, you will never get that money off your debtors. So you have to reduce your debtors. Now, debtors is an asset. Go back over here. Assets belong on this side if we're increasing them and on this side if we're decreasing them. So we want to decrease our debtors. So that should be on the credit side. Bad debt recovered. Now this just means that whoever had um, gone into difficulty, they might have went bankrupt. They've started up a business again. They want to trade with you again. And they've said that they would pay you back everything. So we want to do the opposite of this. Now the only thing is you don't undo the bad debt. You put in a bad debt recovered. Okay, BDR is shorthand for that. You can use that in your exam. And you're going to recover it. So it means your debtors go up again. Okay, buying with VAT. This is coming up a lot in question one. I see it's been thrown up in the suspense. We're seeing it in club. We're seeing, seeing it all over the course because people don't really understand your VAT. I'm going to go back to what you did in the junior cycle. Okay, so your purchases day book. I just say I'm Hughes. I bought a thousand euro off Hughes. Uh, the VAT is 100, so I'm going to have to pay 1100. Now, you will pay 1100, but you will get 100 euro back from the government. So that means the goods only really cost you 1000. So let's go through these three accounts. Purchases is something that you do all the time, and it's an expense. So purchases should be on the debt. How much did you spend? How much will the purchases cost you um, in full? They won't cost you, this is what you pay, but they'll only cost you a thousand because you'll get 100 back from the government. So your purchases must go up by 1,000. I've just said, this is 100 that the government will give you back. Okay, so you're going to get 100 euro back from the government. That's a good thing. So that's something the government owe you money. So it's an asset. So it should be on this side. Now, how much would you have to pay it initially you'd have to pay the full amount and claim back the VAT. So you would own a creditor, again, it's a liability, so when you owe money to, creditors should be on this side and you will have to pay them 1100. If you were starting your accountancy exam, I would actually write that out very quickly so you have it for yourselves. You're going to see that coming up with buildings in question one, it could be buildings and service accounts as well. Okay, next one, VAT. Now, what you need to be careful of is VAT can be an asset or VAT could be a liability. Again, how do you know which it is? Go back over to Earl. An asset if it's on the debit side, a liability if it's on the credit. If it's an asset, the government owes you money. Go back to this little example here. Why does the government owe me money here? What did I do for the government to owe me money? I bought something. So when you buy, you pay out all the money and you get that back from the government so it'll be an asset when you do purchases it'll be a liability when you sell okay make sure you know the difference between the two of those again this one here it's appearing in question one and also in your suspense a restocking charge means say if i bought these goods from Hughes and they're 1100 i'm gonna have to pay him 1100 and I decide I don't want them and I give them back to him and he should then give me back my 1100. But he's saying, I'm actually going to charge you a restocking charge because I had to load them up into a lorry. I had to probably deliver them to for free. It was part of the contract. And now I'm going to have to go collect them and restock them again. So I'm going to charge you something. If they're charging you a restocking charge, it means that you have to increase your creditors and increase your purchases just by the restocking charge. Okay, so just watch that. Um, if you're paying a debt, watch out for a hidden discount received. Okay, so sometimes when you're paying a creditor, that will be hidden in the question. A dishonoured check. Now, all that means is that someone paid you and when you went to get the money out of the bank, there was no money there. It isn't that the person will never pay you. It's just this time the check didn't work. So a dishonoured check means the buyer has paid has not paid you, but will. So 
So you just need to put it back into your debtors to say they still owe you the money and you need to show that the money didn't go into your bank. Okay, so just watch that one as well. Uh, number uh, 13 here, offset against a private debt. Now, what I want you to watch, if they mention the word private, it's either going to be drawings or it's going to be capital. Okay, and I'm going to show you that in a few examples in a few minutes. Drawings is the owner is taking. So if it's there. The owner is taking and capital, the owner is giving to the business. Okay, so it's going to be one or the other. And another thing that they've started to introduce, and again, to just make the course a little bit more difficult because people are getting so familiar with it. Remember this from your junior cert. You used to have to fill in an invoice. So you'd say the goods cost you 1,000. You might get a trade discount. The subtotal is 900. That is 180. And the total amount is 1,080. Just be aware of this because sometimes they're going to ask you to mess around with these figures. So just remember in the exam, so say this was sales, this is the figure that would go into sales, this is the figure that would be VAT. Now, you're trying to work out is VAT an asset or a liability? If it's sales, it's a liability. So I'll just put the L beside that. And this is how much the debtors will pay you. So let's just go through this. The debtors will give me 1,080. Do you get to keep that 1,080? No. You only get to keep 900 because now you owe or you've collected 180 euro for the government. Okay, so just make sure you take that down correctly and understand it. 